You are now listening to the I Walter Show. Real talk about nothing. Faster than a speeding bullet, more powerful than a locomotive, able to leap tall buildings in a single bound. Look up in the sky. It's a bird brain. It's a plane. It's I Walter. I Walter. Yes, it's I Walter, strange visitor from another planet who came to Earth with powers and abilities far beyond those of mortal men. I Walter, who can change the course of mighty rivers, bend ears with his annoying voice, and who disguised as Walter Interanti, mild mannered janitor for a great metropolitan newspaper, fights a never ending battle for truth, nonsense, and the American way. And now, another exciting episode in the adventures of I Walter. All right. Walter. Hey, everyone. This is Walter, Walter. from I Walter. It's actually um, now Tuesday morning. So elections will be happening soon. Um, sorry, I wanted to start actually about an hour ago, and maybe it's best I didn't. It's because now it's officially November 3rd, uh, day of elections. So I'm actually looking forward to that, believe it or not. I'm trying to get my mic thing adjusted right so I'm not like spitting in the mic. So hopefully I sound all right because I really don't wear my headset. I don't like doing so. Um yeah, it was funny. This was a last minute thing. I was going through my emails, and um, yeah, I saw one really cool that I have to mention now. Um, I was really impressed because I finally got through my emails too. It was actually from yesterday now, officially. But it was on. I donated if if they get their money, which I think they will. Unfortunately, I can't afford it. But I gave a you know I think a seventy five dollar donation towards. Some video game that won't come out uh, right away. Now, my friend will bust me on that, but it's just like, hey, I don't play that many games. The games are expensive. They're like 60 bucks, and I don't buy very many games. But I got a console, and I never use it besides just for watching TV, renting movies, and stuff like that, which I, you know, that's mainly what I do anyway. So I figure, you know what, once in a blue moon, there's a game that comes out that I really enjoy. I'll, I'll spend, I mean, that's a bit of money, but games are always very expensive. So he'll probably bust me on that, but my one friend. But games generally run about $60. They're not – well, back in the day, I remember when I played – when I was a kid, my, my father would buy me games for Christmas, and it was like Pac-Man and stuff. Those games were expensive. They were, those were back in the day, and you remember what Dave's looked like. I'm talking about the Atari 2600 games. Um, those were actually $50 just for those games and um, Asteroids and the other ones. So anyway, the reason I brought this up, it's from this web link if you want to donate. You know, um, the reason I donated that much is because then you get a copy of the game when it's done. So, you, you know, you're making your donation, you're buying the game at the same time. So if you, you, you spend any less, maybe it was less than that, but whatever it was, I know if I want like $1 below what, what they asked um, for, you know, a donation, and they haven't taken it. So that's the thing. If they don't make their goal, they're not going to take any money. They don't charge you until they actually make their goal, and their request is seven hundred thousand dollars. Or yeah, seven hundred thousand dollars. Believe it or not, they said they're at eighty-five percent. They're at like um, close to six hundred thousand. So they got a hundred thousand more to go, and they only got ten days until this whole thing's done with. Of asking people, hey, can you contribute some money um, so we can develop this video game? And it's like, well. Um, I think it will happen, but if it doesn't, it's, you don't lose any money. You're not like, okay, I'm going to donate money to help them fund this video game. And if it doesn't, if they don't make their goal, they're not going to take your money. That's the bottom line. My guess is because they got the guy who actually directed, I, did I mention a name yet? I'm not sure. It's a video game called Friday the 13th. It's the first game they made since the NES game back in the day, which I got a copy of that. Um, very hard to play. You know, it's old school game, that, but that was the only one I ever made other, you know, one for the Nintendo NES, and that was it. So this would be the second game ever made of Friday the 13th. Um, it looks pretty impressive. You know, um, hey, I blow enough money already. Why not on something like that? Anyway, it looks really cool what they've done with it so far, but Sean Cunningham is actually backing it up. Um, also, some other people um are backing up so i'm assuming if they get very close they're going to probably fork in the rest of the money is my guess um 
make sure I turn off my volume because I don't want this to um, start making some noise. Um, but, yeah, I wanted to go a little bit further into this in a second. Um, it's on Kickstart again. I've donated for actually more honorable things like um, that I felt. Like there's a woman um, fighting um, – severe um, uh, eating disorder and was like, yeah, well, you know what? I've had friends like who had eating disorders in the past. Um, if I don't even give a couple bucks, I'll feel really bad. So I gave money towards something I felt was, you know, more than just a video game, just to let you know. I donated for certain charities before. Um, anyway, yeah, the people backing up the game um, is Kane Hodder. He was actually one of the Jason Voorhees. But Tom Savani, I met him in person. He's not a very friendly guy, but he's a very intelligent man. Um, he was in Vietnam back in the day. Again, Sean Cunningham and obviously the developers of the video game. So, you know, basically, and the guy who actually composed original music is going back to make the music for this video game. So there's some cool things. Is it worth the money? I can't say either way. It's just like, hey, um, yes, I know I won't have any money for to say if they do pull my amount that I offered. But, you know, hey, that's on me. Nobody else. So I'm just letting that be said. Um, hopefully my levels sound really good. They seem like they're okay. They're just not where I want them to be. Um but, yeah, what, what I was mentioning about this, I might have mentioned it before this game, is they had a Halloween contest. Some of this stuff is kind of fun because, you know, people really get into this stuff. And um, I didn't know about this Halloween contest. It actually said it was a pumpkin carving contest. But what it seemed like people did is they posted themselves wearing costumes they made um, of Jason Voorhees. And some of them actually, um, people really... Um, it's pretty impressive. Some of the costumes they make came up. They're pretty um, realistic looking of a uh, decomposing Jason Voorhees. And, and some of them are quite frightening. Um, and I give people credit to, um, you know, invent these costumes that look really impressive. Now, I'm not sure I can tell you to go because this was actually an email um, where these people put up these costumes they made. Um, and they even name says, Jason Voorhees Part 7 costume, uh, very, very same uh, model was revealed first. But there's different versions of the Jason Voorhees that people made costumes for. And they were really cool. Um, you know, they obviously put a lot of work. I mean, I know, I know most people, well, a friend were saying, this is really stupid why people spend their time. But believe it or not, a lot of this goofy stuff that some people might consider, um, people actually... Go on, you know, even like with video games, they get jobs in entertainment or something. They actually really, you know, graphics, graphic arts. If you're making video games um, and m minus also programming or, you know, a makeup artist. I mean, this was an old skill that's no longer around because I'm looking at these pictures again. And obviously they put more than the costume. Somebody actually made like a severed head. And the amount of detail put – I mean, it sounds ridiculous, but the amount of uh, physical detail they put into this head really looks real. And, I mean, if you watch the old-school horror movies, um, there's even a show called Face Off, I think, where it's both makeup and these people who actually make, you know, um, the, the old-school – uh, um, latex type of monster, uh, you know, severed body parts and stuff. The whole point is it's an art in, um, you know, movies that basically died once uh, computers had taken over. So to me, this is actually very fascinating. You know, it's it can be a hobby um, for most, but some people actually can eventually make this their, actually their job. And for most people who do stuff like this, it's no longer a job. It's actually... You know, you're getting paid to do something you actually enjoy doing. So that's the way a job should be. Do something you enjoy, not that something you're forced to do and just be miserable for the rest of your life. Um, but it was on Kickstart. Um, again, if you sign up for it, you could probably get it. Just look for the one on the Friday the 13th game, and you could probably get these emails too. Update number nine, costume and pumpkin carving contest winners, uh, roundtable discussion, and more. So they keep you informed. It's pretty fun, the information they post up. I mean, 
you know, I like reading things that are not always so doom and gloom. Um, and, you know, it's an escape, you know, horror movies and movies and stuff. And by the way, I actually saw, and I was really, really surprised. I thought it was quite funny. I was laughing really out loud. I'm not just saying LOL. I was really laughing out loud. I Let me see if I can pull it up real quick. Um And I'll mention the name once I get the name correctly. I keep on messing up the name. Scout's Guide to Zombie Apocalypse. It actually got a uh, middle ground type rating. So I went in there considering, uh, uh, not considering, thinking that this movie is going to be the worst thing since, um, like, the garbage B movies, um, like um, Attack of the Killer Tomatoes. And I was really surprised because maybe that was good going in there with my expectations being way below anything I would have thought. I, I just thought this movie was just really bad. But since I had the little extra time um, and I traded, you know, I sold off some movies I or TV shows I don't even really watch um, and actually um, some other things, just to, the, you know, things that when I was cleaning my room, you know, I got like, 11 bucks for the stuff I traded. And unfortunately, it was probably worth a lot more. It's just not worth anything now. And I need the room. So I end up selling this stuff off. And I was like, oh, you know what? This money I sold off these uh, discs for, I'm going to put towards this movie ticket. It's going to be a win, you know, win, lose, whatever situation. And I was embarrassed. I even told him at the movie theater, it was only playing down Plymouth Meet and Mall at that movie theater down there. Was, you know, I said, oh, yeah, I want to buy a, a ticket to the Scout's Guide to Zombie Apocalypse. It was actually very funny. Um, there was quite a few scenes that I was laughing so loud. It wasn't even, um, it was embarrassing. But there was actually only four people because you just hear the name and you look at the um, the commercial for this movie and the trailer. And the trailer does not do this movie justice whatsoever. The movie was much, much funnier than I expected it to be. Maybe that's just me. Maybe I'm easily amused because most people think I am. Um, but no, I, I actually, there was scenes, um, it had the guy, I can't remember his name. I'm going to look it up now. He plays the scout master. And I thought these were like little kids. I didn't realize these are, you know, kids that are 17. Okay, they're little kids to most people. No, not really. But from like, the the start of the movie, the whole movie was really funny, um, right from the get go. Okay, uh, David Koshner, I think his name is, if I'm saying correctly, he was actually the guy who plays in Anchorman and Anchorman Two. He's bald, but you know the whole thing is is making fun of yourself. The characters make fun of themselves, and he was actually really funny. Um, there's a scene if you actually go see the movie that takes place um actually he's on another show i didn't realize that i just realized um and he's really funny on there this tv show called another period um which is really i love that show um he's in there and he's um which i didn't realize i didn't put two and two together that he's actually in his movie i just mentioned um the guy's just a great actor but he wears his toupee which makes him look really different and it's deliberately made to look really bad but despite that, he looks very different with hair. Um, but when he becomes like, obviously, because you see the previews, he becomes a zombie. It's just very humorous because these kids, like the one kid cast to kill his scoutmaster, who is uh, David Koshner. And the funny thing is, um, the kid kills him, but he makes sure like the toupee falls off the scout leader's head, David Koshner's. And he makes sure to put it back on his head because it's like, oh, I'm sorry, I knocked your toupee off. I mean, it was just like really slapstick humor. Um, there is this typical – she was really funny too. Um, Cloris Leachman, she was – I think that was the one. She played the cat woman. Stereotypical, I have a neighbor across the street who fits this lady not with the cats but just being an evil person um, who just hates everybody. And very odious. And her character was, I mean, you're, you're literally, I'm not even kidding, you're laughing out very loud uh, watching this. All the characters were really good in this movie. They were well, um, you know, 
much more, much more better, um, what do you call it, developed than I expected it to be. I thought this was going to be like one of these such horribly shot and acted movies. I expected it to look like um, like something that was shot on video with a bunch of amateurs. No, it actually was not. Um, this girl, uh, Sarah Dumont, I think is the actress's name. She was incredibly hot. Um, again, all the characters were really well developed, I guess. Um, I'm trying to look for an age on this chick, but I can't find one. Um, but yeah, the, the movie was like, I went in there and I was like, okay, I just wasted, you know, $11. I sold some Blu-rays off just to go see this movie. And I was really ple- pleasantly, pleasantly surprised. Would I go see it again? I don't know. Would I buy it? I can't really say at this point. Um, I need a good laugh. Maybe I would, if it was cheap enough, yeah, maybe I would. I would say, yeah, it definitely is a sleeper movie, uh, meaning that um, don't expect anything spectacular. It's meant to be very slapstick. But if you need a good laugh, you like a good comedy horror, this is your movie. This is absolutely your movie. I'm telling you. Um, the humor was like when the the town turns into zombies, there's like the, this old lady, she's a, an old woman and she's in one of those Walmart type looking, um, electric, um, I, I want to call it like a wheelchair, but it really isn't. And she becomes a zombie. And I mean, it's just hilarious. And all the characters that get changed to the zombies are just Really funny. It has a little bit of a scare tactic, very little. It's meant to be more upscale and just plain humorous. Um, even there was one zombie hooker, no puns intended, because there was a movie like that that was really bad. Um, there's a scene, that these two guys, it's in the previews, um, but you have to watch the whole scenario. They go into this strip joint, and um, it was funny. It was very funny. There's this guy who was a homeless guy who was wearing a Britney. I didn't pick up on it at first. This homeless wacko guy in the beginning of the movie, he's a normal guy, but he's homeless. And um, he gets changed to a zombie. And I didn't realize he had a Britney sh- spear shirt on. So when he gets changed to a zombie, the one Boy Scout starts singing a Britney Spear song and the zombie starts singing it with them almost. But it, just the way it was it was presented was very funny. I think the best scene in the movie was these kids get caught or stuck in one of the one of their um you know, one of these kids' houses. They try to go back to find something in the kids' house and they get um overrun by zombies throughout the house. So they all try to jump out. They go on this. It's a it's a bi level house. They try to jump out the second window and escape. But the one kid gets caught because there's zombies all over the ground um, in, in this kid's um, um, in his yard. I'm not doing a very good job, which is probably better. So he tries to jump out the window, realizes he can't, and he grabs onto what he thought was a rope. And here it was an old man who was a zombie now. It was an old man's penis, and he's hanging on it like a rope, and it was like there's a whole skit with that that I was laughing so loud, folks. I can't – I couldn't – I can't even describe how funny it was. Now, it sounds really dumb probably, but it's got that humor um, all through it. It's the you know the teenage potty humor, um, immature humor, but it was done very well. Um, again, if you need a good laugh – um, I would definitely recommend this movie. Um, it's let me see though. This can't be right though. It said open and weekend. It actually maybe made maybe two million dollars, and the gross was about two million. Believe it or not, for a movie like this, that's pretty impressive. Um, you know, you don't expect it to break in a uh, billion dollars, but if you, again, I think it's just because um, it was only an hour and a half, but the movie was. Uh, the, the, the what do you call it? Um, I'm gonna look at box of office mojo now. The 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 trailer did not do the movie justice whatsoever. That's the problem. Um, and I think that actually hurt the film more than anything else. Yeah, because I read these off yesterday. I don't even know. Oh, actually, the Scout's Guide to Zombie Apocalypse. That's not too bad. It actually, came in number twelve. It's not saying a lot either. Um, 
But it did make some um, audiences, you know, unfortunately, yeah, it made under $2 million. That's that's the bad thing. They won't tell you how much the cost of the movie was. Um, sometimes they do. I'm, I'm assuming, but there are some, like, pretty good special effects on these zombies, a lot of extras and stuff. So, um, surprisingly, it came in, like, just a sh- uh, little shy of number you know, past the top 10 movies is pretty impressive. Of course, none of these movies made any much money this weekend. But, um, yeah, I was like, again, it would have been a movie. I think I even mentioned a little friend that it wouldn't be on the top of my list to go see. Um, it would be probably if there was nothing else playing, I would go see it. And there is other movies I want to go see, but I just figured this movie's not going to be in for very long. You know, what the hell? I'll just spend the money and go see it anyway, just for the heck of it. And I'm glad I did. I really am because I... I never laughed in a long time as hard as I did with this film. And I'm not even kidding. I'm not just saying that. Um, I'm being honest. Trust me. Well, anyway, uh, the one thing that got me really started tonight, uh, I'm going to try to see, because this woman actually blocked or cut me off um, when I commented. A friend sent me an article. And um, he knew it would get me charged up, so um, I commented back on his web page. He put it on my web page, and she just pulled the whole – this woman pulled the, the thing because she didn't like my responses when I defended um, the patheticness of this article. I'm going to find it now. I just don't know where I put it. So um, let me see what I can – if I can find it. I doubt she could have pulled it again, though. For some reason, I think she may have. Um, Yeah, for some reason, this lady just does not seem to uh, enjoy me busting on her story. So she keeps on pulling it off my web link on Facebook. And uh, she left it on my friend's page, and I just resent it to myself. But now, apparently, it does not exist again, um, which is kind of weird. Let me do a refresh and see if I can find it. Oh, no. She didn't pull it this time. So she can pull it as much as she wants. But um, I found the the story very, to say the least, it's not the right word to use, but I'm going to use it. Um, it's, I use the – it's basically what would be considered um, liable, the way this, art, this thing was used. I call it slanderous. Um, it was by this – I guess it's a woman. It was up. To, uh, it was posted from this woman named uh, Jace Dillon. And no offense, but there was a lot of people, obviously, who were defending this woman. Um, but yeah, now you know, women. She's an attractive lady too, so they're all going to jump on her bandwagon, and especially men, and defend her story. But it's like, listen, I'm the type of person I won't defend something that is extremely offensive. So she uploaded this video. She either did it herself, I don't know. But it was on October 29th, and it says, Just another day on Newberry Street. Please help find and identify this creep. Not only did he film my crotch and backside, along with the same of at least eight other people. Now, if you look at it, it's at like some university, though. That's the problem. Okay, Least and um, I personally, uh, which was miss uh, was a lowercase i it should be a, an uppercase i personally witnessed in less than ten minutes, but decided to confront him after watching him do the same to two girls who um, not have been more than fourteen years old, and she wrote disgusted in caps. So anyway, I'm assuming this woman actually uploaded a video she had taken. And it's like, well, no offense, um, but you're you're making accusations of some guy, and the guy's just telling her, go fuck off. No offense, but he, he basically tells her this. I watched the whole video, but you're just chasing somebody around, accusing them of just videotaping people when you don't have any idea what he's actually physically doing. And if she's following this guy for 10 minutes, that means that she's technically stalking him. So, um, I mean, no offense, guys will take pictures of women, and if they're dressed, and I looked at this video, and it looks like some, no offense, it looked like some college town thing, and, um, you know, with girls, they're all wearing, you know, uh, lycra spandex, and, um, you know, 
and everything else. And guys are gonna are gonna gaunt and look at it. So if this guy's not saying anything out loudly, he's not doing anything wrong. So I have to thank because there's this woman named uh Kath Campbell. She actually agreed with me, so I thank her for that. She said you can legally photograph anyone who is in the public prop on proper public property, but you cannot photograph public sexual acts, non sexual like um, acts like upskirt photos and people using the restrooms, which I agree with. But this woman was just randomly accusing this guy. He looks like an average guy. Trust me. He doesn't look like anything special. He looks like an average guy. All he's doing, if he's taking photos and he's not doing anything that disruptive, this woman went out of her way to follow him and basically accuse him. And this guy could easily turn around if he wanted to and uh, call the cops and say, listen, this woman's harassing me for no reason. And the reason I bring this up, though, because I do have this in my mix, this is a reason for this. Now, this is amazing that if, if you're an attractive woman, you're going to have every guy, which just happens if you look at this, uh, hey, I have no problem. I don't know this woman uh, you know, or anybody else. I, I don't know her from a hill of beans. How's that? But her name's Jace Dillon. And she's a very attractive woman again, but, dude, I'm not going to deal with this bullshit of, okay, so you're an attractive woman. You can say whatever you want, and you can make, um, you know, make accusations about people with, you know, um, nothing to support your point. No offense. I mean, you're just saying stuff, and you're getting away with it because of who you are or what you look like. And it's just a fact. I mean, that's our society. So, um, again, I'm not going to deal with that. I'm, I'm going to give you my peace of mind. And if you don't like it, that's too bad. And obviously she did not appreciate it because she, she pulled more than once um, my remarks off my friend's page. I just reposted them. Um, so, anyway, and she probably thinks I'm type of a pervert. Well, it's like, go, go ahead, prove it because I'll, you know, I don't, I don't care what you look like. Um, you're just making me more angry of anything else with the bullshit that she posted. So, um yeah, again, I, I just found the whole thing very offensive, um, you know, and, and it just it seems like it's more and more. I just basically post it on the friends page and my page. That's basically what we call the feminazis, you know, and nowadays they're considered feminazis. Women just trying to destroy men, um, make sure they don't act like men and and and, um, you know, that they basically t cut their testicles off theoretically. So um, I'm trying to look. For my supported points, here is a good example of how this um, woman – let me go back to her. I'm going to find her again. Uh, this woman, Jay Dillon, should be careful what she says because she can get herself in a lot of trouble. Uh, I asked her friend for this story that was um, a while back. It was October 15th. And I found it on Channel 4 News, and it was a man writes open letter to a woman reporting creepy guy in park. So this lady did the same thing, this Jace woman. She was calling this guy a creep, making accusations that he was just randomly uh, video, you know, or videotaping or taking pictures of women randomly without their consent. Well, here we go. Here's a good story uh, to shoot down her accusations. Uh, Cambridge, Massachusetts, I read this story a while back, a man open letter, a uh, man's open letter to a woman who called the police to report a creepy guy in the park is gaining attention online. So this guy was a professor. She swore up and down this guy was taking uh, pictures and videos of small children. Well, it turned out this guy, he's a professor, his wife's a teacher, he has kids, he's an older guy. He spends every day at at the park. He sits on the bench. He minds his own business. He wasn't doing anything wrong. Um, this woman got him arrested, thrown in jail. They found no circumstantial, uh, cer you know, I can't say that word right, any evidence to prove that the man, the man was taking pictures of any kids because there was no evidence whatsoever. And he did not erase it because before he could have done anything, he was arrested. He was handcuffed and arrested and uh, made to be out like a sex offender. So this guy wrote a nice letter, though, on this one. It says, Dear neighbor, yesterday was um, was a beautiful day, so I th think you are, will agree. I decided to take a short walk from my house on Hamilton Street to Dana Park, which I had been coming to for almost since 
um, going to since 1989, the year my son was born, as I often do, and I brought my camera and sat down. He basically just takes pictures of the, like the the birds and natural things he sees while he sits on the bench uh, for about 10 minutes. Um, did one lap around the park and headed home. Anyway, there's more to the story. The guy was minding his own be- business. This nosy neighbor called the cops, t- had taken pictures of him, and then made accusations that he was um, trying to pick up young little kids, which was not even the truth. So anyway, um, I do have this posted on my Facebook page. You can read the rest. And these accusations were definitely, without a doubt, um, open and shut case were all fucking untrue and slander or liable. But it was this is written, so... Um, her accusations and her reports. So it's both. It is a slanderous remark against this man. Why? Because it was an older man. He was taking pictures of not children, not people, but of the park. So he gets arrested. He gets ridiculed. And, um, you know, I'm trying to think of the proper word. Um, basically, he was made to look like a pedophiliac. So that's that's beyond slander. That's uh, uh, defamation of character. And she was totally wrong, and she never apologized. This guy took it very lightly. I mean, if I was that man, I would have her behind bars herself and up on lawsuit charges for lying. So, again, I'm going to go back to this other woman, uh, Jay Dillon, who has no fucking clue what she's talking about. No offense. And how did she get away with it? Because she's an attractive-looking woman. And she probably thinks that everybody um, must be, you know, um, stalking her out, you know, men. And obviously she has issues. So I actually said that. I said, this woman needs to look for a mental state hospital. She obviously got offended by that. But it's like, listen, you're a whack job. You're making accusations on a guy who probably is not even doing anything wrong. And if you really have that much of a fear, then call the cops let them deal with it. You don't chase somebody down and make accusations. That's harassment, um, Jay, uh, Jace. So here's another one, um, and I felt bad for this guy. It's a doctor. He said, doctor accused of taking photos of a woman in a bathroom stall. Going back to this woman, Chase, Jace, who has no clue, it was in uh, Worcester, Massachusetts. The doctor and assistant professor at... UMass Medical School is accused of snapping a photo of a woman while she was in the inside a bathroom stall. Well, the guy was honestly, it was a simple, stupid mistake. I, I told a friend this. He said, I've done it before, too. I've done it. Well, you're not paying attention or you just can't read the bathroom sign because, like, you ever been in a restaurant? This isn't a school I know. And, you know, they try to be fancy and they put it in, like, Spanish. If you go to a Spanish restaurant, they were put, you know, the words different. Or you go to, to like, a steakhouse and they put... Uh, cows and whatever, you know, uh, but you're saying, okay, is this a men's room or a ladies room? Or you just, the sign is fucked up. Well, this guy wasn't paying attention and he walked into accidentally into the ladies bathroom. Didn't realize it. This professor or doctor or both Dr. Marcus Cooper, and he wasn't paying attention and he was checking his emails and his woman automatically thought that something was going wrong. So she reports him and calls the cops on the guy. So um, it said it was a a 26-year-old medical student, but the guy made an honest mistake. I've done it before. I remember walking the bathrooms that I thought were were the men's room. I don't do it deliberately. And I look around. I was like, okay, where are all the urinals? And I was like, wait a minute. I think I'm in the ladies' room. I've done that more than once, and even over the malls. It's just like a – it's a very stupid accident that could easily happen. But this guy was – uh, checking his emails, and he got arrested, this doctor, professor, for walking in the wrong bathroom because she accused him, again, falsely accused a man, of walking into the bathroom to deliberately take pictures of this woman who was, was, was again, not even true. And I accidentally stumbled upon these stories after looking for this one. There was actually three different ones, but I think two are the same. And it's the other one, um, it was on... PetaPixel.com or PetaPixel.com. See, they made this man out, yeah, it is PetaPixel. They tried to make this man out to be a pedophiliac. He was not. 
the original story I told you about, another professor, though, man's pen open letter to a woman who reported him for taking pictures of children. Again, this was October 17th. So you got to read this professor's um, um, comeback. And he was, you know, obviously he's a very intelligent man. He's an older man. He's a professor. And he was a little bit perturbed. But this woman made accusations and defamated this man on something that wasn't true. And why I'm saying this is going back to this woman, Jay Stillen. So I made sure to throw every uh, dig I could possibly throw on this woman just simply because she has no fucking clue what she was talking about. No offense. So I was glad, again, this uh, woman who supports my side, Kath Campbell, I thank you for that. This woman, I think, um, that supported me is actually, she writes articles for um, uh, peer articles or magazines. So, you know, hey, I'd like to hear somebody else's view. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm just trying to see the ones I, I, she actually pulled my story more than once. She pulled it down and I think, yeah, she pulled it down. I just repost it again. Every time she's going to pull it down, I'm just going to repost it just to make her look even more like an ass. So no offense. Um, but you know, just to be a jerk back to her who had no clue, I'm going to go to my friend's page, um, where he did not. She did not pull his story off his link because he he shared it off her page. This woman um, that I mentioned, which now I can't even find. Well, now here it is. Jace, I made sure to put underneath as a comment, feminism and the feminist domestic violence industry has transformed society, politics, and the government, courts, and police, and the general public, uh, encouraging and Ap- uh, academic, ap- apodemic, not academic, apodemic, of false accusations of sexual harassment, domestic violence, and rape, making the task of establishing, it goes on, but it, it's not all there. Yeah, it, it's got dot, 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 so it, there's no more to it. It was a thing I posted, though. And then I had to make sure to put underneath of that one, um, basically, feminazi, which is, quote-unquote, this was on Urban um, Dictionary, a person of any gender who has been brainwashed or uh, coursed to activities through the secret UN New World Order Initiative, whose goal is by destroying males by any or all means to adjust the balance of power towards non-traditional families or towards single women. There's more to that. It's on my Facebook page. Probably not all mine because she made sure to pull them more than once. But it was like, hey, you can keep on pulling them. I'll just keep on putting them back up just to prove my point. Just because somebody looks attractive does not mean I'm going to cave in and uh, take this woman's side. I think I will do the complete opposite as much as I can on anyone. I don't care if you're a man or a woman. I just I think it's ridiculous. And by the way, there is a web link called angrywhitedude.com. And there's a plethora of stories on there. Uh, you know, people are just guys are finally just got, had enough of this bullshit with the political correctness. And I'm um, obviously I'm one of them. So, you know, this woman, she tries to get away with stuff just because she is an attractive woman. And I'm not going to say the truth. She's attractive. But uh, again, this is not going to um, bend my um, belief that she's also obviously a nutcase as well. So I think that's like the worst of my stories. Um, I'm trying to see. I already told you about the Friday the 13th one. Again, I have to thank the woman um, who, Kate, 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 Kath, who backed me up. I, I really appreciate that. Um, I can't say enough. And um, so I thank her for that. Um, but, yeah, that, that's that's my um, rant and rave for tonight, by the way, just to give you a heads up. Um, I do have some funny stuff on my Facebook page. It's not all that bad. Um, and again, uh, Kath Campbell, I, I can't thank you enough for at least supporting my opinion, uh, allow me my opinion. And I, you know, I have questions. I felt bad. I, this woman, Kath, I, I thought I might've offended her. Um, cause some people take offense when you attack certain people and it seems like it's not appropriate um and i'm talking about transgender people but it was funny 
I'm not trying to do it, but I also have my opinion. I didn't use it for the humor effect. I actually used it for another reason. It was um, basically, um, who is it now? Clint Eastwood. When he has a caption, he says, I remember back in the day when Bruce Jenner was on a box of cereal, not a box of tampons. And I understood it. Um, people are very upset about that whole thing. And I don't post this stuff to offend people. But if I believe in something, I will post it. Um, here's another one. It was funny. And it was from this guy. He's a friend on Facebook. And I actually worked with him at one point. Um, I can't remember his name, but I did take a lot from his uh, Facebook page, so I have to thank him. I just can't find his name right now. I think it's uh, Jeremy. No. I'm trying to look for his name right now. On uh, No, it's not. Anyway, it's not important. Probably it's best if I don't mention his name. But he did put up some really good um, pretty, uh, really good statements. And one, it was meant to be just to show you how conceited people can be, too. And these guys um, had on the streets of I don't know where, and it was a joke, behind a tarp, a camel. And they were making comments. So all you see when people walk by, especially young girls, they see or hear this guy say, oh, I really like your camel toe. So that obviously turned, and this is no joke. This is for real. It's his camel toe and something nag, ha, ha, ha. So it was just just to say, oh, so you're making that offensive statement about women and camel toe. And it was like, no, there really is a, cam- a camel behind this hidden tarp. And these women then, there are one there. I'm looking at the video now. They're looking down to see, okay, do we have that our pants are riding up between our legs? And some of them look very offended and they turn around and then they're in just utter, emba- um, utter embarrassment that is like, wait a minute, it really is a camel that they're talking about. So, again, there you go. I mean, it was very clever the way they did that. Obviously, it's a whole joke thing. But the whole thing was how people easily, I think the gist of the joke is how people easily take anything and automatically get offended uh, offended by it. So I have to thank the guy. I got to look almost. I don't want to drag his name into it. Um was originally put up by somebody else, actually, R. Breezy After Dark. And uh, so I'll have to look who that is and add them because um, I'm going to like them too. Yeah, but it was from a link called R. Breezy. But then it wasn't – I didn't get it from R. Breezy. I actually got it from somebody else. But once again, um, when somebody can prove that people just get offended by everything nowadays – and make them look like an ass, I got to give that person, you know, kudos for doing so, you know, because people are just so self-centered and so uh, we live in a society of really self-centered and conceited people. And um, it gets to the point now that I'm just really fed up. That's why when I read this story about this, again, um, the story about what I went off with this attractive woman who just feels like I'm the center of attention and um, this guy is a creep because he's some dopey looking, average looking guy. So I'm going to harass him and say that he has been taking offensive pictures of me without my consent. So again, this woman, Kath, actually said, you're allowed to take pictures in public. There's nobody can stop you as long as you're not violating that person by doing so. So, um, and I take random pictures and trust me, and I never done, and if somebody came up to me and told me, that I am taking pictures of them and they don't appreciate it, I'm going to tell them to go fuck themselves or go get um, or let them know I will call the cops and I won't back down and I'll make sure you get arrested and charged with um, some type of harassment. And I won't I won't hesitate on that. Trust me. I will not hesitate whatsoever. So anyway, um, lighter note, I, I got to break up this, this anger uh, – moment I'm in right now, but I'm actually tempted to see this is coming out, um, you know, because I ha- when I have the time, I'm, I'm taking advantage of it. Um, there's not much else I can do anyway. And the, uh, now, I could do certain things, but it gets dark out early. I am not an early bird person, so my day is pretty much wasted by the time I get out of bed and out the door. 
and it gets dark around five o'clock. So it doesn't give you much of a window for doing any work on if I want to do any. Like I told a friend I would like to do some filming and stuff. I don't know what to film, though. That's the problem. This radio show, at least I'm going to continue to do this for now, um, is the Peanuts movies coming out. Now, you can say what you like. It's a kid's movie. I don't give a fuck. I've been um, loving the Peanuts since I was, like, literally crawling. I used to love the Peanuts. You know, um, Peanuts meaning, um, you know, Snoopy, Charlie Brown, and stuff like that. Everybody loves them, so... There's no harm in that. It's an innocent movie. It's rated G. It's for everyone. And, hey, it's done in CG, so um, it looks really cool. And it would be something fun to watch. It's a good holiday movie, you know. Um, again, I grew up since I was a little kid, probably in first grade. Actually, grade school, I would love the Peanuts, and I never grew tired of them. I actually, when I was a little kid, I actually – um, wrote a snail snail mail letter to Charles Charles M. Schultz, and he makes sure it's not him who responds back. You get a stamped autograph, but he makes sure to write back and you know, or send a letter out, the fan thing, and everything. When I was a little kid, I was I was ecstatic. I thought that was the greatest thing. It was fun. So hey, you know, hey, on another light note, if you're um, into consoles, um, meaning like the PS4. Or the Xbox One. Hey, this is pretty cool. I seen this on Polygon last night. I was looking for stories for tonight. Uh, Sam's Club is going to be offering the PS4 with a free game next week, it says, for $299. That's really good. Those consoles were like 500 bucks. So the price drop is for, you know, a pre-thing for before Black Friday, obviously. It says Sam's Clubs will be selling the PlayStation 4 system at a discount next week. According to the flyer leaked on Cheap Ass Gamer, on November 14th, the retailer will sell the console for $2.99 in a bundle. That includes a free game. That's not bad at all. Uh, there are thing, some things to know to deal with uh, will be offered for just one day, available as a 7 a.m. door buster. While the bundle price represents the savings of 50 bucks. the flyer does not make uh, explicit explicit whether the free game is up to the customer's discretion. So it could be a shitty game. Additionally, the Sam's Club runs on a membership basis. Memberships are available for an annual fee of 45 bucks, meaning that this deal is only available for those who are already uh, have paid dues for the warehouse. Uh, we reached out to the Sam's Club for clarification in the particulars of this bundle but either way, two ninety nine for a PlayStation Four is a pretty spectacular price. That is really cool, though. So if you're a person who wants to buy, you know, for yourself, or if you have kids and you're like, "Hey, I'd like to buy, you know, the PlayStation Four, but it's a little bit pricey," you can't beat that uh, that price. Three hundred bucks, you get the console, you get a joystick, and you get a game. And whoever it's for, it's it's a steal. Trust me. So I just wanted to mention that. That was yesterday I saw that. May actually the day before yesterday. Um, let's see. I was actually over the Plymouth Meeting Mall uh, walking around for a while and talking to people. I found out a lot of stuff. There's a record store down there. I got their car. Let me see if I can find it. And um, I was actually at that Comics and More. I recommend to go in there, too, because they got some really cool kids in there that work there. And they tell you a lot about everything. These kids are, like, not stupid. They're smart kids. Um, okay, it was called The Rock Shop. Um, we buy and sell now uh, used vinyls. I have some old vinyls I'd like to pull out and just, like, listen to them. It's like, wow, because they even have, like, these USB-type uh, record players. Not really great. Sounds not probably incredible, but... It's kind of fun, and apparently records have made a comeback here and there. They're, they haven't died out. Records actually sell just as well as they did um, back when I was growing up, back in the 70s and 80s. So, um, yeah, so, yeah, that was really cool. A friend sent me, by the way, this reminded me. I'm going to have to look for this now. I just noticed this. And this is really disappointing because I was, like, all psyched to dress up for um, going to see – this is something different. I apologize. I just jumped around. Um, and it was the next story in my, my mix. Um, I wanted to dress up because it's like been a, like quite a while since the last Star Wars movie. A friend had just texted me tonight, and it was from Yahoo. It says, 
Um, he sent me this article that says, Lightsabers, mask, banned from select Star Wars, The Force Awaken, Awakens screening. So I was like, well, yeah, I want to kind of just for once have some fun with going one of these movies and just dress up ridiculous in, in a Star Wars costume. But they're, apparently they're going to ban it. And lightsabers, too, like the toy lightsabers. Bad news for anybody, um, for any budding Jedi out there. They're showing up to Star Wars Force Awakens screenings. Screenings at a certain theater chain won't be able to bring in the most prized possessions, lightsabers. Uh, the band sabers were revealed by uh, Cinchmark via posters advertising the December release. In small print below, information about the pre-sales for The Force Awakens is the legend Star, legend Star Wars costumes are welcome. However, no face coverings, paint face, or face paint, or uh, simulated weapons, including lightsabers or blasters, will be allowed in the building. Fellow theaters, which is one I probably would go to, I think I got Regal, though. Chain AMC will be enacting a similar through uh, more... Uh, uh, this different type of policy. So it mentions AMC is going to be, uh, oh, wait. Following 2012 shooting, both Regal and AMC restricted masks and fake weapons as a part of attendee co- cosplay. Cosplay is when you go to these comic book conventions and you dress up in these costumes. But you know what? I thought it'd be fun to do it for at least this movie. But yeah, now there is going to be restrictions both on Regal and AMC as well as increasing the amount of bag checks as part of the regular uh, security. They do that at Regal, by the way. They do do bag checks. The summer's train wreck shooting uh, re-resonated discussion about the strengthening theater security, including discussions of whether or not um, metal detectors should be installed in theaters to reduce the uh, likelihood of such events happening. I mean, I respect the fact that they're doing this for the safety of, you know, you enjoy going to a movie and enjoying it without uh, paying with your life of sitting down and having to worry about that. So I, I respect that. Um, so anyway, I thought it was pretty cool, I guess. I have a story here from the Dream and Demon, by the way. November 2nd, yesterday, woman may face charges after beating boyfriend with a mounted... Uh, it says sailfish, but I think it's a swordfish. Uh, this was in um, Mushin- Mushinkin County... Is it Miami? Prosecutors say that uh, they may file charges against a 50-year-old, 58-year-old woman who allegedly hit her 61-year-old boyfriend over the head with a mounted – is this sailfish? I, again, it looks like a swordfish. Then poked him with the um, the nose of the fish. Or is that a, mar- a mariner or something? It says uh, sailfish, but, it, you know, the ones with the long – sword-like uh, nose on the fish. I've seen those mounted in uh, restaurants before, down the shore, down when we go to, I go to Cape May. Making sure I'm just getting levels again, because it just seems awfully dead on this. I'm going to have to listen back. Uh, yeah, so it says when she returned... Oh, wait. According to what the boyfriend told police he and his girlfriend were drinking at around 2 a.m. when he decided to sketch a mounted sailfish. Uh, the two began arguing for some reason, and she moved the fish before leaving the room. Um, when she returned, she found the fish had fallen and broke, believing that her boyfriend was responsible for the broken fish. She grabbed the head of the sailfish and, yeah, it does say sailfish. I don't know. And began hitting him over the head with it. Um, the man called 911 and poking him. I guess she poked him the, um, with the nose of the fish and cut his hand. I'm going to have to look up sailfish now because I'm going to make sure I'm getting this right. Yes, it is a sailfish. Sailfish are... Uh, genius, luperous, whatever, of uh, uh, billfish living in warmer sections of all oceans of the world. So I didn't realize. I guess because they look like like a sail. I See, I thought they were some type of other fish, but they're called sailfish. And, yeah, they, I guess they do look like kind of like um, their design of the fish look kind of looks like that. 
Um, yeah, I'm just going to pull from here because I had these other stories. I don't know if I still have them lined up properly. One was another one on Dream and Demon yesterday. Uh, Paul, you charged with attempted murder after forcing son to ingest rat poison in Dallas, Texas. Police charged a 31-year-old Paul Yu with attempt to murder after attempt to murder after they said she forced her young son to ingest rat poison him. Um, police were called to Newport Landon Apartments on Saturday after receiving a 911 call from one of Yu's relatives once they were um spoke with Yu's 12-year-old daughter who told them her told them her other was trying to it says other i think they meant mother her mother i guess was trying to kill because they left out the m trying to kill her and her two siblings said that the u um it's e h is that you told her told her she was going to kill them and then herself she put rat poison on a spoon and tried to force feed her four-year-old son to uh, drink it when uh, he kept his mouth shut who allegedly slapped her son and forced the poison into his throat his mouth so um, yeah that's a very unique story I, I don't probably don't really need to read anymore there's another really weird story this one's not about somebody trying to kill somebody but Jacqueline um, Eid Whatever was bit by a tiger, she tried uh, petting after breaking into Omaha, Oma Zoo. What's NE, folks? Because I'm not even sure. NE. Jacqueline, whatever, because I'm not going to screw her name up again, is facing uh, trespassing charges after she broke into Henry Dorley Zoo to pet a tiger. And she got mangled a mangled hand for her effort. So that is really kind of dumb. Um, in the early morning after Halloween night, an intoxicated this intoxicated woman got inside the zoo and made her way to a cage of Maya, an 18 year old Malayan tiger at the zoo African Grasslands exhibit, and she uh, paid with her hands. I just don't understand some people. Um, yeah. Again, that's one I probably just don't need to go any further. So, because I already screwed up two stories. Now, this one was one sent from a friend, so I appreciate it. And it was actually right down the street from where I live. I'm not even kidding this time. It's lower Providence. iPhone electronic device is worth $29,000 stolen in a lower Providence store heist. Now, it's at um, the T-Mobile store, which I've actually dealt with before. I actually had my phone at one point when I had my T-Mobile phone. I actually got it from the store down in Lower Providence here. Um, Cell phones and electronic devices worth close to $29,000 were reported stolen from the T-Mobile at 615 Trooper Road on October 28th. Police were dispatched to the scene shortly after 9.30 a.m. and met by two employees who came into an open store and discovered the burglary. Uh, Police swept the premises and found that there were no suspects on site. And now the reason was, though, these people broke in from – there was a hobby store. It's called Hobby Hut adjacent to the – to um, the T-Mobile store. Well, that Hobby Hut now moved down towards – oaks right next to this laundry mat where i do my clothes all the time and uh the door wasn't locked properly the back door to the hobby hut which is empty now it's vacant and these people that were able to break into the hobby hut they broke through the drywall of the wall from the hobby hut store that was there and went through into that way they went into the t-mobile store and they actually end up stealing a lot but they also were smart enough to um, disable any surveillance cameras so nothing was caught. So these guys or these people are getting away with what they stole. According to the instant report, there were uh, pry marks on the rear door of the hobby hut, which was shut but not um, was unsecured. Inside, the police discovered insulation and debris left by two uh, two by four foot holes dug in out of the drywall leading into the T-Mobile's store's bathroom. 
One or more uh, suspects apparently gained entry through the hole and disabled the store's video surveillance and alarm systems before stealing the items, which included more than uh, f- over like it looks like forty thousand and sixty uh, forty. Okay, more than forty sixteen and sixty four gigabyte iPhone six S's. So they're the brand new ones, and they're at least. Um, got to be close to like six, seven hundred hours a piece, I would guess, because there's a lot of them. Cell phones from um, the storage room. They also cut open a safe containing an undisclosed amount of cash. Detectives uh, processed the scene, and the investigation is ongoing. Well, g- good luck, because you can't tra- uh, trace without surveillance cameras. You can't trace the cash, and you will not be able to trace these phones. Unfortunately, I don't think especially if they weren't activated. Anyway, it's that was on the Times Herald burglary, and I don't know when it was dated, even though it said um, updated seven hours ago as of now, posted originally on yesterday's date. They just actually finally posted something about it. They didn't do it right away. Um, so, yeah, I think that might be... Actually, I did have another story. I, I actually pulled this one up myself. Um, this was in Denver, Denver, Colorado. Can you love um, charged after kicking small dog to death during an argument? Uh, that was probably yesterday. Police in Colorado have arrested 25-year-old Can Lee Love after she was accused of fatally kicking a small dog during a domestic violence incident. According to the reports, police responded to the residents of her early earlier this month and found uh, Love holding the dead body of a small dog. She explained to them that she had kicked the dog while arguing with her boyfriend. Uh, Witnesses told police that during the argument, Love kicked the dog and sent it three to four feet into the air. It must have been uh, one hell of a kick or one small dog, as the dog was dead by the time it had hit the ground. So that was on Dream and Demon. There was actually a story I saw in the news live. I didn't bother to listen to it, though, because it was pretty a pretty morbid story. But it was actually on the live news tonight where um, some guy killed his stepdaughter. This was in the Pennsylvania news somewhere. And he basically had sex with the, the dead uh, body of his stepdaughter. So this guy was up on charges. They actually had film or video footage of it somehow. I don't know why. Maybe the guy filmed it. And he actually buried his uh, stepdaughter in his backyard. So anyway, this guy's this one I don't have a story on. I just heard it on the news live tonight. His trial came up, and they wanted to show the court. Um, it was like, I think, a couple-minute video of this whole situation. And most people refused. And it's like they they felt like it was going to... Um, I'm trying to think of the right word, uh, discourage or actually, um, I can't think of the right word, um, jade their way of thinking, I guess, on finding this guy guilty. It was like, well, this guy raped his, it was on the news again. I apologize. I don't have any source for this one. And it was on um, some cable channel I normally don't watch. It's, um, I think it was called Retro TV. It was 11 o'clock news. Anyway, if this guy uh, was uh, sick enough to kill his stepdaughter and then rape the dead body and bury the uh, body in the backyard, yeah, if you have evidence that can uh, get this guy put behind bars or even um, sentenced to first-degree murder, um, I don't see any problem. I don't know why people would have a problem watching video that it's going to incriminate this guy who is obviously um, needs to be uh, taken off the streets. That's my opinion. Anyway, I did send this story to a friend, and um, this was really cool. It's lighter note, so I'll let you know now because I have to break it up after that last story. Um, I know I'm all over the place. Really cute story for once. Mashables, kids' realistic Guardians of the Galaxy costume just blew away on our Halloween, and it is very cool. He's dressed up like the – I thought it was really a raccoon. That's how good this costume is. But you know the raccoon in Gar- Guardians of the Galaxy? Um, this kid's costume, he really looks like a real raccoon, like, but a, a raccoon who can walk on, on its hind legs. 
I mean, that's how good this costume is. Uh, the picture was originally posted on Facebook by a maker, the maker herself, Christina uh, uh, Bulgiart. According to the comments, uh, she made the entire thing from scratch. It looks very impressive. And she made this for a kid. I got to give her um, kudos again or whatever because it looks excellent. It's a really cool costume. Um, everyone, take down your Halloween Instagrams. The kid just put us all to shame. You have to see that. It's somewhere on my – I think it's on my – I'm going to put it on again because I just really like this. Um, it really uh, blew my mind. Really cool costume. I just put it on Facebook now. Um, I thought I had another story, too. <laughs> Sorry, I'm laughing about my friend's response to that. He actually did find a story. Um, I'm sorry. It's going to go back to not so good. And it was on thebiglead.com. Notre Dame fire tutor uh, accused of setting up sex between black athletes and white daughters. Um, Yeah, it's kind of strange. Notre Dame fired an academic tutor accused of uh, uh, concealing, concealing, whatever, Concerns. Uh, I can't think. Of, I can't pronounce that word. Black uh, athletes into having sex, sexual lacer- lashings with her white daughter, according to the New York Daily News. This is no joke. I know. I'm really botching that story. I'll post that right now on Facebook again because it's probably buried at this point. Um, per inner report, the t- the tutor violated the discrimination harassment policy one of the students is suing the school uh those lessons quickly escalated into out of state sexual lashings between her daughter who was also at the school and the student she was encouraged this is all well this is quoted she was encouraging it uh this tutor said that the man other lawyer, Michael Mish, the moms sought him out to promote the relationship by providing hotel rooms and condoms. Uh, the academic coach would later uh, inaugurate him about the nature free and the nature, frequency, and quality of sexual activities they had. The lawsuit claims badgering him with racially charged comments about his sexual proudness and genitalia uh, genitalia and the suit uh alleges yeah you know what i did i did uh, well i have made such a poor attempt of reading that story again um just look it says college football but it's on this web link called the college i mean i'm sorry the big league.com notre dame fire tutor Accused of have uh, of setting up sex between black athletes and white daughter, so I don't know where that came from. So I don't know where it was found. I guess because sports is a big thing right now on every level. So, um, yeah, I think the other stories aren't too good. I probably already even read most of them anyway. Why destroy any more stories? Stories for tonight. And it's getting a little bit late for me even. So, um, yeah, I apologize for these last couple stories. It's probably not being very entertaining or just completely botched by my um, trying to trying to read or make sense out of them. So, um, yeah, I mean, on my situation, um, since I can't do much now, I, you know, I've been trying to do stuff to get back into my job. I personally don't think it's going to happen right away. And that being said, I think what I'm going to probably end up doing is just make the best of it. Uh, do what I can do. Oh, there was a story here I wanted to read, actually. TMZ, I was looking for more things to support my point with that lady I was mentioning at the beginning of the show. And um, here on TMZ, this was something I didn't put up. This is an article. TMZ is kind of a trashy link anyway. Ten Sexy Stars in Spandex. That's the title. Thank the Lord for a Lycra explanation point. This was on the second that was yesterday. The story was posted. Uh, working it. The celebs are working it in some sk- skill-tight exercise gear, leaving 
little to the imagination. Check out the top 10 babes that have been spotted recently in some curve-hugging clothes. Stretchy, stretchy. So, you know, again, you might as well put this guy under um, whoever wrote this article, if it is a guy, um, under, oh, he's being very offensive. And they show you, um, uh, well, I'm not going to pretend I can know. Jennifer Garner is one. Kylie Jenner. Um, they're all wearing like ultra, ultra tight spandex. Courtney Car- uh, Kardashian. Uh, Haley Baldwin. There was one before I couldn't read. Uh, Nikki Minaj, obviously. Kendall Jenner. Um, Julian Yu. And Gigi had it had gg had it but they're all wearing like ultra tight spandex so you know hey no offense um guys notice and um yeah the paparazzi are obviously taking pictures of this stuff they're even noticing it hey wait um there was 10 different women i didn't read the first few i just couldn't even begin to pronounce their names right but they're all wearing like basically second skin clothes and there is nothing being held up to the imagination. So you might as well go after these paparazzi and call them um, creeps and perverts as well. Now, I'm sure if it's – I mean, I'm not going to say it, but if it's the right man looking at you or a piece of trash, then it's not a problem. But if it's some average guy who's minding his own business, all of a sudden he's checking you out and you need to uh, lock him up or he's a creep – because that's just, that's been an ongoing thing since I was probably growing up with the way women react. But it's now they got ground to stand on because of our poorly run government, which I hope changes a little bit locally tomorrow. So, um, yeah, I don't know what else to say. I, I probably uh, have beaten a dead horse. So um, that being said, folks... Um, Hopefully I didn't annoy too many people. I know I do annoy my one friend, so um, I try to keep it down to a minimum. I only have a handful of people anyway, so, you know. Um, Yeah, I hope you enjoy my show. But what I was going to say, actually, too, also, I'm actually half tempted to do this. I'm half tempted to do this this weekend. Um, I got an email today that – because I I love going to, like, when I have the time – and obviously the money. So if I don't have the money, I'm not going to do it. But there's this thing called Heggy Tours. There's one seat that was still available um, after I looked it up. I didn't know Heggies would actually do this. Um, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm getting distracted. Um, but uh, for this play up in New York, and it's playing this Saturday. This coming Saturday, yes, it's going to be there. And it is... Um, for um, Misery. They made that into a play with, um, I'm going to see if I can find that email real quick. And then um, I'll let you know. Because I marked it. Okay, here's my Kickstarter. Sorry about that, folks. Trip Advisory. Trip Advisory. Maybe I didn't mark it. I thought I did, Taylor Nation. Don't ask me about that one. I'll, I'll, I'll deny it to my um, to my grave. I'm just kidding. But I won't. Um, yeah, but I got an email today. It was because I, you know, I've gone this year, this past year, I've gone to like two plays up in New York, and I actually really enjoyed enjoyed them both. Uh, one was um, maybe it was one play, one musical. I thought it was two plays, though. But one was the Elephant Man. I really, really, really enjoyed it. So um, that being said, let me go to this thing called Heggy Tours real quick. I thought I was done with my show. I guess I'm not. So let me check. Um, see if the ticket's still available. And FYI, Heggy Tour, sorry about stepping away. Heggy Tour is actually really worth it because you get your bus ride. They drop you off. They even uh, let you stop off to get something to eat. Um, I'm looking it up, Peggy, Peggy Tours. But I saw, I got an email, and it just came out like um, it's new for this this winter or fall. Is it fall yet? It's new for this year. It just came out, and like, and uh, the Peggy Tour actually jumped right on it. Um, all tours. 
Let's look at this, Broadway, single, search. Because it might still be, um, it looks really, yeah, Misery on Broadway. Um, yeah, I mean, the tickets are like $209, but that's that's also, that's, that's a, a bit of money. But plays are not cheap. I mean, that's just the way it is. But um, it's Bruce. It stars Bruce Willis, and I like plays. I actually started enjoying those. Uh, stars Laura uh, Metcalf. She plays actually the, uh, the the main character. You know, the woman who is obsessed with Bruce Willis. Bruce Willis is going to play the character. Um, let me read it real quick. New show in, for 2015. The play of Misery follows a successful romance novelist of Paul Sheldon, the character that Stephen King's book had, who was rescued from a car crash by his number one fan, Annie Wilkes, and wakes up in, um, in captive in her secluded home, stars Bruce Willis and Laura, like I said, Metcalf. It's playing this Saturday. Um, actually, there was one ticket available left because they actually sold sold out this show and um actually almost not surprised so i'm gonna see um but yeah that that's playing this weekend i was half tempted to go see it but i'm not sure i mean um i'd like to because i i like plays you know something that kind of broadens your um your what do you call it yeah the ticket's still there there's only one literally one ticket left and it says, welcome to our online booking system. During the booking process, there will be six easy steps to get it. Um, but it's pretty straightforward. You just got to meet them at their location. I think it's in uh, Soderton somewhere. Um, but, yeah, let me see what a, the tour in on itinerary is, whatever, how you say that. It basically, I pick it up at 820. Showtime starts at 2 o'clock, but you arrive in New York at 1130. Uh, arrive in the heart of New York. You will be dropped off uh, near the theater with a restaurant guide of the area and given free time for lunch and shopping. The theater district is in Times Square around uh, area between 41st and 55th Street from 6th and 8th Avenue. And I think, if I remember correctly, because when I've seen other plays up there, it's not too far from the Hard Rock Cafe. Now, yeah, that is a bit of money, though. I mean, most, honestly, any play you're going to go see, they're not cheap. You're talking a, play, a Broadway play. You're not talking cheap. So I got to take that in consideration. Um, again, it's just something that would be, um, you know, out of the ordinary. It's not going to see some goofy movie or something. And I always think you have something to learn from going to a play. It's just, do you want to spend that money and have to pay it off later? I don't know. I might do it. I don't know yet. I'd like to go. It'd be a nice day up in New York too. I'm not paying, paying the tolls. I'm not paying the fare, um, or the gasoline, um, or anything else. That's all covered. So that, that's another thing you have to take in consideration. If I want to do it, I don't know, but I think it would be quite fun though. I'll say that much. So anyway, folks, um, that might be, something i could actually talk about i like to do sometimes some interviews with people i don't know when would be nice eventually in the future i hope but everyone have a good morning on this tuesday please go out and vote if you listen just remind everybody uh and yourself please vote if you listen to this and i don't care if you vote republican or democrat i can't tell you or sway you i would influence you to vote republican and look at who you vote on the Republican ticket, but I can't really put a gun to your head, so I'm not going to do that if you do listen. So, folks, thanks for listening to me. Have a good morning, and I'm signing off.